Even with all this high-tech machinery, it's still up to humans to pound the chips into jars. You come here often? All snug and tidy, the chips shuttle down the line to the ingredients that give pickles their flavor. Pick the ingredient of water, vinegar, salt, and dill flavor. The dill flavoring comes from dill weed oil, which in the Middle Ages was believed to have magical properties and was widely used as an aphrodisiac. You want to try some? Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Can I drink it right out of the glass? Right out of the glass. Bottoms up. Let's get pickled. Not something I want to drink every day, but I can really taste the dill and the garlic. And finally, the pickled cucumbers are capped, pasteurized, and sealed in plastic. This part is really cool. They're putting a shrink wrap band on the top so that you know it's fresh. But before it goes in there, it's got one last chance to kick it out. Let me just show you what it'll do. So if it doesn't have the shrink wrap, it'll automatically just shoot it out. I'll do one more. Isn't that cool? In about a week, the seasonings soak in, and what were once cucumbers can now be called hamburger dill chips. This is the moment we've waited for all day. After trying the pickles in the brine, trying them in the water, now I get to taste the good stuff. Oh, it tastes great. The vinegar and the dill are perfectly balanced. It's nice and crisp, and it's gonna be great on our cheeseburger. So will some lettuce. And you won't believe the system that's in place to get it to you 72 hours after harvest. I feel the need for speed. Because when it comes to lettuce on a cheeseburger, crisp is king. And when it comes to crisp, iceberg lettuce stands alone. Because iceberg lettuce is 90% water, its biggest enemies are evaporation and wilting. That means getting it from farm to cheeseburger within 72 hours. So when the iceberg is ready, the clock starts ticking and harvesters spring into action with just their hands and a special knife. So we've got this uh, pretty snazzy instrument that these guys are using like samurai. They do five, six, seven heads a minute sometimes. And in just a few hours, this is gonna be in the plant. A few hours after that, it's gonna be on our table. Now, I'm gonna give it a shot here and, and try if you don't mind. Sure. Huh? And uh, I'm gonna be real careful. So I'm gonna go slow on the first one okay, or two, okay? Right. So I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna exactly. reach around the big leaf and kind of chop Cut it, it off at the, base. at the base, okay? There you go. Now, did I kind of leave too many of the big leaves yeah, on there? Yeah, you did, All but right. that's okay. And kind of use that as a holder, okay. and you're gonna wanna remove those outer wrapper leaves. Okay. To get any of the defects off, any extra soil off, there you go. Okay. Then you're gonna wanna take that core out. Uh-huh, like that? There you go. The nice thing about this knife is, you know, when we're cutting it off, the long end gets into the dirt. But when we're using the coring end, that means none of the dirt ever gets inside of it. Let me see if I can keep up with these guys for a little while without slowing them down. You know, this is no cakewalk. I've only been out here a few minutes and I'm already feeling it in my back and in my legs. Tough guys here. Slow down, you're making me look bad, buddy. With iceberg lettuce especially, it's more about the texture than the flavor even, right? That's right, you want that crisp taste. And I'll tell you, there's nothing better than tasting a head of lettuce that's just been freshly harvested. If you open it up, it's crisp, and oh, break yeah. it open, you can really taste the freshness. Man, you don't need to do anything else but get it to the store, right? That's right, fresh from the field. Perfect. Well, we gotta get going because we got a lot more lettuce to pick. At the other side of the conveyor, a water and light chlorine rinse cleans the lettuce. This lettuce then falls into specially lined bins to keep it cool during travel to the aptly named Fresh Express processing plant. So the iceberg lettuce has been unloaded off the trucks and loaded into this contraption. This is called a vacuum cooler. And without the application of any cold at all, it sucks the heat right out of the icebergs. It brings it down to below 40 degrees Fahrenheit in less than 30 minutes. When it comes out of here, we take it right into the plant and get it ready for processing. But before I enter the plant, it's time for another hairnet and lab coat. Then a quick stroll through the hand and foot sanitizing wash. 
So this iceberg lettuce is just coming in from the field. It's been chilled and cored, and it's ready to start being processed, right? Correct. This tag on the bin tells me this product was harvested yesterday, delivered today, ready to be processed here through our bin dumpers. And speed is of the essence when it comes to iceberg. It is. Cut to cool in four hours, delivered to the plant, processed within 48. Full head lettuce is simply packaged and sent to market. For those of us who like shredded lettuce on our burgers, a conveyor hustles the heads through a series of chutes and into the shredder. Iceberg lettuce is just flying in here. There's a big circular blade spinning really fast, and the lettuce is getting shot through that blade at monster speed. Then it's bath time as the cut lettuce enters the agitation fluid. The water's just potable water from the city with a combination of food grade chlorine and food grade citric acid. You know, that chlorine and the citric acid are completely fine. They're safe to eat. All they're there to do is keep the water clean while it's washing off any leftover dirt that may still be on the lettuce from the fields. The rush to market continues as the lettuce cascades toward the final steps. A hoist then lifts and lowers the bin into the dryer. After a one minute tumble, the now dry lettuce is portioned, bagged, and boxed. The lettuce that was in these boxes entered the plant less than 30 minutes ago. They're about to be loaded on trucks and sent out to retail stores and restaurants. Within hours, refrigerated trucks will transport the lettuce to restaurants and grocery stores. And we've got another layer on our cheeseburger. Time to sink our teeth into our next item, the onion. I love my job. Now I understand why the ancient Egyptians believed the onion's odor could restore the breath of the dead. Woo! All right, I'm done with this one. This is a yellow sweet Spanish onion, and it's one of the oldest vegetables known to mankind. It's grown in huge fields just like this one. The sulfur content is what makes the flavor so great on burgers. It's going to hold up to a lot of toppings. But the real story behind this onion is how it's grown. It starts with a little tiny black seed about the size of a ballpoint pen. On onion seed plants, the onion itself isn't important, only the seeds. To find some of those seed plants, I traveled to Parma, Idaho. And this is where I ended up. I'm in a huge field surrounded by 800,000 umbels. Umbels are these umbrella-shaped flower clusters and within each one are about a thousand onion seeds. The field is laid out like a prom dance. Boys on one side, girls on the other. And that buzz in the air, that's the sound of the matchmakers. We rely on honeybees to take the pollen from the male lines and transfer it to the female lines to pollinate or produce the seed. Okay, I'm never one to shirk away from the danger of being around vicious animals. You can see that this honeybee is actually grabbing the pollen off of the male. And uh, if he's doing his job right, he's gonna fly over to the female plants and uh, cross-pollinate between the two. And then in two short years, we'll have onion seeds. A thousand seeds per flower times 800,000 flowers. You do the math. That's a lot of seeds. That's a lot of seeds. That's 800 million onion seeds. And with each seed producing one onion bulb, that's more than two onions for every person in America in this field alone. So what are we gonna do with these umbels once they're ready to go? Well, we're gonna cut them off right under right the umbel. Right at the top, yeah. Once the tops are cut, someone has to extract the seeds from all the other stuff. That's where the Newman Seed Company comes in. So once the seeds have been dried, after coming out of the field, they come into the plant looking like this. Tell That's me right. what we've got here. This is, this is what we refer to as, as dirt seed. It means it comes in from the field with a lot of different plant parts. There's stems, there's florets, there's some dirt from the field, and, and trash, basically. And the good seed are these little black dots that you see there. That's right. And when we get through this, we're only going to get about 25 or 30 percent yield of seed out of all of this, 700 pounds. All right, well, let's get started here. Here's one. I got, well, I missed one. Yep. Right, there's one. We got a ways to go. Yeah, it's gonna, we're going to be here a while, <laughs> we're right? We're going to be here a while. How about we use this big machine back here? That's and a great out idea. Okay. First, the forklift guy dumps the seeds and extra stuff into a hopper, which drops them into elevator cups. An air screen cleaner separates the seeds from the larger plant parts. What's left moves to the slanted gravity deck. So it's like modern day gold mining up here. We've got air shooting up from the bottom as well as it's shaking. And I see that 